I'm really excited about Jordan Davis too, especially what we're seeing in training camp right now. Very excited on what we're seeing. The way that he's playing, the way he's prepared, looks to me like he's come in in shape. James Bradbury, hey Edge, I, I, I think this guy, look at how many guys they got with chips on their shoulder this year coming into this season. Hassan Reddick on his third team in three years. I don't know. Maybe he wants to start putting some roots down. Bradbury, kicked to the curb by new giant management. Didn't want to give him the money he wanted. Okay, so he stays in the division. A.J. Brown is aggravated with the way that the Titans decided just to let him roll out of town and not give him the money that he thought he deserved. Welcome aboard National Football Show. It's your boy, Big Sills. Pull up a chair, sit back. You want to be part of it. We go back and forth like a ping pong in the chat room. If you just want to watch the show and listen, we are packed today, and I appreciate everybody coming aboard. First hour, the head football coach of the Clemson Tigers, Dabo Sweeney, will be with us at the bottom of the hour. Can't wait to talk to one of the most important coaches in all of college football. I think his football team has a chance to win the national championship this year. So we will talk with Dabble Sweeney. That'll be at the bottom of the hour. Hour number three, a man who was with Dick Vermeil when he came to Philadelphia from UCLA and started that great run. Carl Peterson, the former general manager of the Kansas City Chiefs, will join us. He's the man also that hired Dick Vermeil to be the head football coach in Kansas City. He and Dick Vermeil are partners with his wine company, and we will talk to the man who was there with Dick over the weekend at the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. So we'll talk to our friend Carl Peterson. That'll be in hour number three. We appreciate all coming aboard, and it is football season here, man. You know what I'm really digging? I'm really digging the access that the Eagles give the fans to watch some of the practices on their social media platforms. You know, it's a new age now where you get a chance to watch your favorite team, whether it be the Patriots or be the 49ers, the Buccaneers, what have you, the Eagles, obviously. What the NFL has done now by giving access so that you can watch the practices. Yeah, there's narrative going on with some of the people that they have in the building. It's all good. But for me, I love it, man, because you get a chance to watch the players on how they are going through this new wave of being coached. It is a new wave. It's a new style of coach. And you know what? I think it's more of a me thing. When I'm talking about the old school ways and how you have to practice, you know, you don't have to do the three-hour practices. You know, I was listening to Barrett earlier, and – Lane Johnson was on, and he's saying, yeah, man, we're so efficient now. We don't have to do the three-hour practices anymore. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. You know, there was a great saying back in the day that Marv Levy told me that he used to tell us Buffalo Bill guys. And that was this. Don't guard your desk. Don't sit around and guard your desk. If you're coming in and you've got to sit here for eight hours and you're going to guard your desk, don't. You get your work done in two hours, three hours, four hours, 12 hours. Whatever it takes, don't be chained to your desk because you feel obligated. Make it productive. And that's what you're seeing with the new wave NFL and how they're coaching these kids and how they're getting to the players now on trying to be a little bit more safe. So I get it. You know, I'm talking, you know, we're sitting here, we're we're constantly banging on the fact that These guys are not out there, in my opinion, preparing for an upcoming NFL season. Physical football, I think you have to have physical practices. That's not what they're saying nowadays. So, again, I think it's more of a me thing here. A little bit of news. I heard Rob talking about Jason Kelsey going in for a scope on his elbow. I've had a couple of those. You break your bursar sack, and you have bursar sacks in your elbow and in your knees. And those things are just nagging injuries. I don't think it's really anything to freak out about unless they find tendon issues in there with Kelsey. And by the way, that's one of those positions you can't afford to lose. Your center is the quarterback of your offensive line. Without that guy in the building and without that guy in the huddle, that's a major loss. And by the way, 
Am I saying that that's a significant? No, I'm not. But what you don't want it to do is linger into being something that could be absolutely over the top. I, I, Timothy, I'm not worried about it. I just think it's a concern that you should keep an eye on. Does that make sense? That's all I'm saying. I am not sitting here in any way saying, hey, look, this is this could be a troubling moment here. For That's not what I'm saying. It's just something to keep an eye on. Because what you don't want it to do is linger on into the season where it becomes a nagging injury all season long for Jason Kelsey. And you start to see it a little bit in his performance out on the field. That's all I'm saying, okay? Just something to keep an eye. You know what it also does? It also gives Cam Jurgens an opportunity to maybe not have to be redshirted a little bit this year. He's going to be getting important reps now. These are going to be quality reps. Instead of dealing with the fact that you're going to be kind of on the scout team here and doing some special team stuff, this elevates now him with an opportunity, next guy up, and you're going to be coached by Jason Kelsey in the process. That is amazing. Not only are you going to get Jeff Stoutland coaching you, but you're going to have also Jason Kelsey coaching you all at the same time. That's spectacular training for the young player. When you've got guys like that, the coach, the best offensive line coach in the NFL, and you've got a Hall of Famer also teaching you, man, there's no reason for failure here unless you're just not good. And both these guys signed off on Cam Jurgens being part of the Philadelphia Eagles. I think this is a great thing. You're now going to get a lot of reps in the exhibition. Jason Kelsey doesn't need a lot of reps in the exhibition season. I'm not toting that guy out in exhibition games, and I'm not throwing him in hour and a half practices in his final season as an NFL football player. I'm not doing that. He doesn't need it. But this gives Cam Jurgens an opportunity now to get some playing time and some significant playing time. I absolutely love this. Again, it's a silver lining in this whole thing here is that Jurgens is going to get an opportunity to get some quality reps going against the ones and you're going to be in a position where I would think this, you're probably going to tote him out there in some of the exhibition games to get him some live play so that you do get him ready just in case Kelsey's not ready for the Lions. So this is a silver lining. How about Howie, too? Watch this, guys. Check in the good side here for Howie Roseman. Howie Roseman was looking at Jason Kelsey on how this guy's going out each and every single day. Band-Aids, duct tape, I mean, right? Staples. And he said, you know, let me get a guy to prepare for this transition. It's almost like Howie, again, it's Nostradamus here a little bit, right? Let's get Cam Jurgens. Let's draft him. Significant draft choice, too. And who would have thought people were thinking next year that he was going to be more of a relevant factor? We're talking about a guy right now that is going to be possibly relevant in the first quarter pull of the season, the first four games. So I'm all over that, man. Let me, let, let's me let start it off fun here, okay? Let's start it off fun here. What new Philadelphia Eagle are you most excited to see playing in 2022? Of all the new players... A.J. Brown, Hassan Reddick, James Bradbury, Kaiser White. By the way, got to give it to Kaiser White. Thank you so much, dude. That was awesome. Retweeting um, our post from Jacob. I think this guy's had the best camp of any player in Eagle camp. And I think this guy's going to have a special season this year for the Eagles. He retweeted it. And we so appreciate it. Thank you very much. I talked to Tom Telesco about him. They really like the kid, man. And... You know, how he got – sometimes players, they just fall through the gaps here. And here he is, a Philadelphia Eagle. He's playing with an attitude. I told Tom Telesco that. Guy's been quiet. Guy hasn't said anything. And all he's done is he's gone out and played his ass off. He's gone out and really performed during training camp. And what I love the most about it is I'm not hearing anything about that player. All I'm hearing is – is that this guy wants to go out and play some ball this year. 
and he wants to be an every down linebacker. And I really like the kid. So he's somebody that I'm looking at too. Um, there are so many new football players that are on this team that are going to make significant impacts. I mean, if you had to pick, okay, I see Jordan Davis. Boy, I'll tell you something. I'm really excited about Jordan Davis too, especially what we're seeing in training camp right now. Very excited on what we're seeing. The way that he's playing, the way he's prepared, looks to me like he's come in in shape. James Bradbury, hey, Edge, I, I, I think this guy, look at how many guys they got with chips on their shoulder this year coming into this season. Hassan Reddick on his third team in three years. I don't know. Maybe he wants to start putting some roots down. Bradbury kicked to the curb by new giant management. Didn't want to give him the money he wanted. Okay. So he stays in the division. AJ Brown is aggravated with the way that the Titans decided just to let him roll out of town and not give him the money that he thought he deserved. There is a lot of guys on these prove it years and on these prove it contracts that are going to go out this year and play with a chip on their shoulder. You know, there's nobody sitting here going like this. Hey, man, you know what? I got this thing made. We're all good. I'm looking forward to seeing this, man. Sills, what do, what do Hurts have to do to convince you he's your guy? How many TDs? Flex, I'll get into that here in a minute. Dankos, we're not talking about Hurts. Why? There's 52 other guys on that team that are going to win the NFC East this year. He's just the major part of the whole thing. Okay? He's the major part of it. I'm going to be really looking forward to seeing this year. I really am. I'm going to be looking forward to seeing how they're going to play Jordan Davis and what his role is going to be this year. And I also want to see one thing about Jordan Davis. I want to see if Jordan Davis lives up to his tremendous potential for being a great football player. He had so many great football players around him at Georgia. And now He's got an opportunity to be a star with the Philadelphia Eagles on a good football team and potentially around some really good football players. And you've got a guy like, you know what's great too? Look at Cam Jurgens. Cam Jurgens has Jason, he's got Jason Kelsey to sit there and talk to. Jordan Davis has Fletcher Cox to talk to. What do I have to do here? What's the first thing that I have to do? when it comes to being an NFL player. I guarantee you Fletcher's telling him, get a routine going. Get a routine going as soon as possible. Show up on time here. Show up. Do everything the same. Show up. Have a routine. Get yourself ready to rock. Don't be showing up at all different times. Do your weight work here. Do your study work here. Make it so it's clockwork every single day. Every day that you're doing the same thing. I was taught that by Ed Jones. Tutal said, get a routine going. I wish I was told that earlier in my career. And I had a guy that I could lean on in Tampa because it is so essential on learning how to be a pro immediately in a professional league. You know, everybody comes into the NFL with tremendous talent. Okay. It's the guys that understand that this is a profession, that you're getting a check now, that you're paying your own bills. Okay, you're not on scholarship any longer. I'm really looking forward to seeing him play this year and how they're going to play him and what his impact can be. By the end of the – you know, I thought N'Kobe Dean was going to have an impact on his football team. I'm not so sure of it right now. I think his learning curve is going to be a little bit slower than what we're seeing with – Jordan Davis. I think Jordan Davis is going to make more of an impact, and I think they're really looking forward to having him part of that three-man rotation for the upcoming 2022 season. So I'm looking forward to that. And again, don't be down on N'Kobe Dean yet. In three years, if we look back and N'Kobe Dean's not the player that we were hoping, we'll know then. You, need, you traditionally need three years before you can find out whether or not you think a player is good or not. You just can't make an assessment in the first year, Jerry Rice didn't have really a great first year when he was in San Francisco. And all of a sudden, everything just took off for him because he started understanding what it was about to be a pro. So, I mean, there are so many great positives this year. 
Philly Eagle 843. Did you see AJ Brown presser where he says that Slay is a top five corner? You know, that's great. That's great teammate support. Edge. Nobody's hitting anybody. Nobody's hitting anybody. I love the support. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna downplay the support. Great. Awesome. Glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear A.J. Brown talking about his teammates. The more that you get talking players about each other, it's a great thing. It forms a bond. I'm not going to sit here and go, Darius Slay's a top five corner when you're not hitting or tackling. How difficult is that to say when you're playing touch football? Come on, man. Back up on the brakes a little bit here. Pump the brakes a tad bit. Before you start barking on who's great and who's not, let's hit somebody first. Let's get into Friday's game against the Jets before we start talking about top five corners. Okay? And by the way, I'm not aiming that at you. And I'm glad A.J. Brown is saying that stuff. That's a good thing. But when you're not tackling and you're you're, you're not hitting anybody, how can you make that assessment? You don't know that, man. And by the way, that goes across all camps. Guys trying to tell me, well, this guy really looks good in camp. Well, you know what? By the way, Gary Cobb said yesterday, Jalen Hurts, in his opinion, he's been struggling. Some of the other people that you're hearing saying that Hurts is looking great. Okay. We'll find out in September here. We will find out in September. That's why I'm not down on Rager yet. Flex, the reason you're down on, on, on Jalen Rager is not because of what he's doing now. It's because of the lack of production on Sundays. I'm not down on anything Jalen Rager's doing right now in training camp. I'm down on Jalen Rager because Jalen Rager hasn't produced on Sundays. We could sit here and talk about Jalen Rager all you want. It means nothing until we get to the opening week against the Lions. That's even if he's on the team. I have no, 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 no. I'm Switzerland right now on actually most of the guys. Let's see it in combat. Edge, I love TJ Edwards too. I think he's going to play this year with a, with a massive chip on his shoulder. Tanner, appreciate it. Please, everybody hit the like button. Thank you so much. 